what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out 10 wild confessions from huge wrestling stars it should be a very interesting one you know everybody has something that they you know hold uh near and dear to themselves you know some type of maybe secret you can say that they you know some people don't feel like revealing or maybe will choose to reveal at a later time and th there's no exception for wrestlers too you know sometimes people forget wrestlers are just like you and me so they have things that they kind of uh hold to themselves and keep secret for a while till they feel like maybe letting people know or whatnot or you know letting people know how you know they they move on their day-to-day -day life outside of the wrestling business so we're gonna check out some of these confessions pull uh people have been uh well wrestlers have uh have revealed should be a good one appreciate all love and support let's get right into this one man are necessarily candid types by definition they lie and it is incumbent on them to lie they want you to think that they really <laughs> hate the storyline rival they'll say they're a few inches taller than they are and they'll say they weigh a couple of pounds heavier than they do this mm -hmm. is undermined by shoot interviews and podcasts there a wrestler will talk far more freely about well anything so i'm andrew from what culture wrestling and here are 10 absolutely wild confessions that wrestlers have made over the years number 10 the Undertaker confesses his love live at the Slammy Awards. Okay. The Undertaker was all about protecting his pro wrestling persona. For which sure, he rarely, for many, many years. Broke. Of course, that has to be said in the past tense these days because, well, the dead man thought admitting to being old and terrible for the last however many years of his career made for compelling, critically acclaimed Netflix style documentary series. Did you know that Taker broke character years and years before he hilariously clawed for an Emmy? At the 1996 Slammy Awards, The Undertaker sent a coded message to his wife at the time. JLC, he said, you are always on my mind. Oh, wow. See, JLC equals Jody Lynn Calloway. So why did he say this? Was Taker apologizing for a bit of on the road how's your father? Or was he just being mm. a big old soppy bollocks and telling his missus that he adored her in between working the executioner and Tatanka? Number nine. CM and that's like, like I said, these they're like you and me, man. They just have to put on a persona for the cameras and a lot of times uh you know for the public appearances but they they have emotions and feel pain and and love and sadness and happiness and anger they're human beings at the end of the day <laughs> punk admits to an in-ring accident soiling yourself is oh, quite no. the embarrassment for well, sure that's at least what i'm told it's not something a high profile wrestler who takes themselves extremely seriously would readily admit to but 2013 was a very different time and cm punk he was in a very different place punk had stopped giving a damn a long time prior to december when in the middle of a match with dean ambrose he filled his britches on an episode of wwe smackdown constantly ill and unable to locate any yeah. motivation due to the grueling schedule he was working cm punk not only did that act involuntarily but advertised that fact to the world he was scolded by wwe management <laughs> for tweeting the s word because swearing is clearly unacceptable on a platform that children should not have unmonitored access to and is obviously much worse than operating wow. a company that for so long has struggled to genuinely care about workers rights number eight i never knew that <laughs> my man said yep i just let one out I don't give a fuck, man. <laughs> I'm over this company. <laughs> Marty Jannetty admits to an unspeakable act. Uh -oh. Firstly, Marty Jannetty claimed in the aftermath of this outrageous story that his Twitter account had been hacked. Nobody will ever know for sure. That's not, man. He's sometimes Twitters do get hacked, but at the same time, sometimes that's not the case. They just, you know, people use that as a quote unquote out. But this hacker positively nailed Janetti's uniquely bizarre writing style. Marty is fond of ellipses, multiple exclamation marks, and adding or removing certain letters from words incorrectly. Mm. For example, he will write loves instead of love. He does this often, as you'll find out here. And the person mm. hacking Marty Janetti's account was as good at mimicry as the young bucks are of ducking FTR. So, <laughs> back in 2017, a hacker convinced the world that Marty Janetti lived out the Mr. McMahon character's sickest dream that he had designs on his own daughter. 
As the hacker said on Twitter, if you loves me as much as I loves you, you will give your opinion. Just did DNA two weeks ago. She's not my daughter. We both held out of sex because you don't do that. But now that we ain't, from a guy's side, she's effing hot. But she's been daughter. I want to too, but can't get past that. Uh -huh. The worrying part here is that in the hacker's sick mind, Marty Jannetty had urges towards his not daughter before he even had it confirmed that he wasn't related to this young woman. Whoa. Number seven, Marty Jannetty. Hey, yo, I don't know, man. I don't know, that's kind of creepy, bro. Hey, yo. <laughs> He what? also claims to have killed somebody. Taken to Facebook in 2020, Marty Giannetti claimed to have committed murder in self-defense. According to his story, a 13-year-old Giannetti was lured out the back of a bowling alley under the pretense of buying drugs. Sensing an imminent assault, Marty revealed that he made his first victim disappear. So, why did the why did the silhouette? Did y'all notice that look like fucking HBK? Was that a Shawn Michaels silhouette? Why was the silhouette? That definitely looked like a Be Shawn Michaels drugs, silhouette, bro. Sensing an imminent assault, Marty I definitely think that is a HBK silhouette. Y'all are childish with culture. Revealed that he made his first victim disappear. So, in effect, Junetti outed himself as a serial killer, as the implication here is that this was just the first person that Marty had offed. Ginetti reckons that while the man was never found, they should have checked the Chattahoochee River that straddles the border of Georgia and Alabama. These ramblings sparked a manhunt, which in turn compelled Ginetti to reveal that he just made the whole thing up. It was obviously BS. After all, a wrestling serial killer with a pension for one. Uh. I don't know about that one, bro. <laughs> this is this is took a creepy turn, bro. <laughs> Wild sex? What is this? NXT when it was supposedly still good? Giannetti later claimed that this original post was merely the beginning of a damn wrestling storyline. Because of course it was. Number six. What wrestling storyline? John line? Cena's TMI moment oh, on no. the Howard Stern Show in 2006. Oh, no, as WWE champion deep in the ruthless aggression era, Cena was encouraged to publicize himself as a bit of a lad. As part of this top boy PR crusade, John made an appearance on the Howard Stern Show. And there he told the world of his rat up a drain pipe sex capades. Ironically, given the fact that WWE launched its PG initiative to move away from this sort of thing, Cena conducted himself rather well here. Stern was operating in his typical unpleasant mm. manner, trying to get Cena to admit to his shame in sleeping with a larger lady. But Cena was having none of it. To him, it was a great night, lights on, great experience. Stern <laughs> then tried to frame such an ad as disgusting, but Cena was nonplussed. So, nothing shameful here, it's just wild that footage exists of the child-friendly Super Cena copping to being a prolific shagger. Instead, the only thing John Cena should be ashamed of, it's that STF, John Boy. Number 5. Yeah, I mean, that wasn't bad. I mean, he, once again, he's a human, so he got it on with somebody bigger, you know what I'm saying? He hit her with the five moves of doom. And then, um, you know, once he, uh, you know, hit his finisher, you know, he hit her with the you can't see me and boom, he was gone in the night just like that. <laughs> New Jack claims he wanted to badly injure Vic Grimes. The story oh, is New yeah. Jack never forgot the events of ECW living dangerously. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely saw the, uh, I believe he talked about this on the dark side of the ring. Uh. Was that the Dark Side of the Ring? I think that's uh, that's uh, the docu series um, where he talked about this. Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, he now nah, he legitimately he legitimately did not care about him. Uh, I believe he threw him off a of scaffolding <laughs> in the match they had, tased him and threw him off. Didn't care where he landed. Like he legit hated him. Thousand, at which he suffered brain damage when Vic Grimes fell on top of Jack after Grimes was dragged into a balcony dive spot that he was trepidatious about. Yeah. Two years later, when the rancid XPW attempted to reboot the essence of Paul Heyman's extreme outfit, New Jack sought his revenge. In the 2005 documentary Hardcore Forever and later repeated on Dark Side of the Ring, New Jack claimed that he wanted to kill Vic Grimes oh, for sure. by throwing him headfirst into the top 
turnbuckle and this throw would take place yep. on the top of a scaffold and through a ludicrous amount yep. of tables unfortunately there are plenty of holes to all of this firstly new jack and vic grimes worked without incident together at hardcore heaven 2000 just months after the initial incident at living dangerously Secondly, New Jack didn't really throw Grimes with too much force in 2002. He claims this was an accident and that he meant to do it harder though. And three, New Jack is a professional wrestler. If nothing else, it's a wild thing to even try and incorporate as part of a work or a storyline. That, Could have been you that. Know, you're trying to murder somebody. Number four. Brian. But if there's anybody that I believe, it's him. <laughs> if, it, if it was anybody that I believe would want to murder you legitimately in a wrestling ring. It, it's definitely him. I mean, he legitimately stabbed someone in a wrestling ring as well, so. Brian Danielson lies about his concussion history. Brian Danielson is a self-effacing fella who, by the standards of pro wrestling, is probably too honest for his own good. When asked by the Gorilla Position podcast in 2018 if he could see his program with The Miz lasting until WrestleMania 35, Brian laughed in their face. Brian Danielson, however, is a professional wrestler. Lying is in his DNA. Mm -hmm. He admits to lying to WWE about his history of concussions before mm -hmm. signing with the company, which he then attributes to WWE's fear of clearing him in those wilderness years between mm -hmm. 2016 and 2018. Number three, Cody Rhodes. That's Ro crazy. I, before he got there, he was like, yeah, no, nah, I'm concussion. I ain't never had no damn concussion. Nigga probably had a few concussions before he got to WWE, man. Rhodes takes responsibility for toxic tribalism. You think that thing that happened in WWE was bad? What if it happened in AEW, huh? Bet you'd love that. Yeah, you'd absolutely eat it up <laughs> if it happened in AEW, wouldn't you? Yeesh. The online wrestling fan experience is exhausting post-2019. Yeah. Then again, it's never been especially great. Mm -mm. You couldn't rate a WWE match three and a half stars, as in very good, without some demented fan wishing death upon you and your family for not giving it five stars, which obviously <laughs> but... you definitely would had it taken place in the Tokyo Dome. But online discourse is so much worse these days. Now, we all live in hell, the new 10th circle of which is bonkers theories such as Tony Khan must have leaked the Vince McMahon sex scandal in order to deflect attention from Jeff Hardy's DUI arrest. You can't even browse Twitter for more than a minute before somebody will take a shot at you if you dare to say a nice thing about WWE, AEW, yeah. or say New Japan Pro Wrestling. I can put some of the blame on my shoulders for this, Cody Rhodes acknowledged on mm. After the Bell with Corey Graves. Why would Cody do this to himself? Number two, Vince McMahon. I mean, he did hit the infamous sledgehammer bashing of the throne when aew first really kicked off we got the symbolism there you know and then of course the the tribalism with fans in the w uh in the wrestling community i've i've seen some people talk about mjf and adam cole being better than the bloodline storyline and i personally have to disagree with that wholeheartedly but i do think it is good and it's working for them in aew right now it's a different storyline different context it's working you know so people are just trying to compare things and a lot of people say stuff because they know they're going to get a rise out of individuals so you know you're entitled to your own opinion you know what I'm saying but at the same time someone's entitled to respond it's just how you respond like when people start doing too much it becomes an issue like yo just relax it's just wrestling at the end of the day just calm down and publicly admits wrestling is predetermined many words describe mcmahon genius moron entertaining repulsive bold <laughs> is as accurate a word as any and vince embodied this characteristic in 1989 when in front of the new jersey senate he said mm -hmm. the obvious part loudly and made public the fact that Wait, wrestling was predetermined. Real? His timing was ideal. Not that he was interested in doing anything else except paying less tax, as of course, by 1989, there were barely any competitors left to piss off. Vince had won. Most everybody uh, knew that wrestling yeah. wasn't on the level in 1989. Still, it's wild that Vince thought nothing of ruining any remaining urge to bargain to the contrary, just to save himself a few quid. Number one, two words. And, you know, obviously he was dealing with the steroid stuff and, you know, he had to had to pretty much let them know, let the world know, no, it's not real. <laughs> he, was, he had to let the world know too, so it... 
you can say, did that ruin the business? Some would say it did. But at some point, the way technology <clears throat> has advanced, people are going to find out anyway that it was all predetermined. You know what I'm saying? To so it, even if he wouldn't have said it, people would have found out just, just off of just technology and, and being able to look with your eyes and see things. Words. Vince McMahon has two words for you. No, it's not paralegal payout. Instead, <laughs> those two words are public relations. Oh, Upon boy. questioning by the House Subcommittee on Commerce, Trade and Consumer Protection and the House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform in 2007, Vince revealed that he only extends the offer of paid rehabilitation to any past or present independent contractors for the purpose of optics. Oh. McMahon, and this is a quote, does not feel any sense of responsibility for anyone of whatever their age is who has passed along and has bad habits and overdoses for drugs. Sorry, I don't feel any responsibility for that. Nonetheless, Damn. that's why we're doing it. It is magnanimous gesture. A magnanimous gesture. Hmm. Come on, Vince. For obvious reasons, McMahon was extremely careful not to admit any culpability yeah. for the grim epidemic of untimely death that played pro wrestling in yeah. the 1990s and 2000s. But in doing so, McMahon had to willingly depict himself as a man transparently attempting to clean up his company's rotten mm -hmm. public image. So that brings our list of bold wrestler confessions to a close. I mean, he, I mean, he had to. Uh, hence, that's why they, you know, with, when Jeff was there, they always were like, hey, you know, we'll suspend you, but, you know, so let's get you to a program. Let's get, let's try to help you with this or whatnot. Let's get you sorted out. You know, to kind of cover themselves, if something happens, they can be like, well, we tried to get him here. We're suspending him and we tried to get him into this program that we knew would be good. He didn't want to do it. So I don't know, man. It's very interesting. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 quite uh, funny that, you know, Vince will never admit to, you know, some of the alleged payouts. <laughs> to some of the women <laughs> that forced him to have to retire last year uh, he'll never admit to that he'll take that to the grave unless there's some documents that that should be the the confession vince confess to your dirty dirty ways <laughs> but comment down below let me know some other uh i guess you could say confessions you may have heard for or, or heard about or secrets you may have heard about from different wrestlers um that wasn't listed in this video or whatnot most of these were pretty tame outside of uh martin Janetti, bro outside of him yeah his shit was kind of honestly his shit should have probably been at the number one spot because he was over here talking about yeah i that with me i got hacked you sure about that bro i don't know man that that may have been you <laughs> it's crazy dog what happened to marty Janetti, man out there <laughs> confessing to crimes and shit but i appreciate all love support love road to 150k and i'm still young speedy youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all next one peace